عزیزان امروز مهمان بسیار عزیزی دارم که یک موضوعی رو میخوام باش در میون بذارم و او با ما صحبت بکنه که میدونم مورد توجه شماست چون ما میدونیم ایران رو خدا نجات خواهد داد همه ما میدونیم که ایران عوض خواهد شد ولی خیلی ها میگیم خب بعد آخرش چی؟ بعدش چی؟ خیلی از ما به فکر دموکراسی هستیم میگیم دولت عوض بشه چه چی چیزی جای گذینش بشه مهمون امروز من راجع به همین خواهد صحبت خواهد کرد اریک کسیه که تو آمریکا بسیار شناخته شده هستش کتاب های زیادی نوشته خودش برنامه های رادیوی و تلویزیونی بسیار معروفی داره ایشون مشاور رئیس جمهورای آمریکا بوده خلاصه ایشون در قسمت سیاسی و روحانی و ایمانی و مسیحیت و میدیا دیگه سره به ما افتخار داده امروز با ما باشه اریک ویلکم Thank you. It's my honor to be with you. Eric, uh, what's happening in Iran? As you know, the government of Iran has lost its credibility among people. Yeah. And 40 years of oppression, the people of Iran are saying, okay, we don't want Islam. Yeah. Actually, we don't want any religion. Yeah. Uh, maybe the next best option for us will be a democracy, a right. secular democracy. Right. Very, very popular yeah. uh, in Iran. The yeah. idea of let's get rid of this government yeah. and bring secular democracy. Yeah. Uh, but they don't know what it is. They right. don't know the good good about it. They don't know bad about it. And you, uh, you're you an expert in this. That's uh, why you're here. <laughs> I don't know if I'm an expert, but I think, you know what it is? If you are a real American, you understand what is liberty, what is freedom, what is democracy, what is self-government. Most Americans today don't really understand this. We have not been teaching this for about 40 or 50 years. When I really began to understand this in the last years, 10 years ago, I couldn't believe that I had lived my life in the United States not understanding these ideas. These ideas are amazing, and these ideas are, I would say, this is God's idea of how people can govern themselves. And it's fascinating because it's the opposite of a theocracy. It's the opposite of a government that is uh, saying we're speaking for God. And yet it's also not entirely secular either. It's a mixture, which I would say you almost have not seen in history outside of the United States. Tocqueville, the Frenchman in the 1820s, came from France to visit America to see what's going on there. Because in France, they had the classic case where they had religion, the church was mixed with the government so much that it was an oppressive force. So the free thinkers in France hated the church and hated the priests and hated because they saw this as oppressive. And it was oppressive. But in France, they traded this for no God, for atheism, and these ideas of democracy or whatever. But they basically failed. It ended in a bloodbath. Many of these kinds of revolutions in, in Russia, they rejected the Russian government and the Russian church. They rejected it, and they replaced it with something opposite and equally evil in the end. So Tocqueville comes from France, where they've had this chaos, And he comes to America and he sees something he never thought he could see. He saw that the people of faith, the churches, were working hand in hand with freedom. In other words, instead of being enemies, he said, I see they're helping each other. I always thought that either the church is the enemy of freedom or, you know, he didn't understand it. And here's, I, I, will, I will put it in the way I, my friend Oz Guinness came up with this term, this idea. This explains the way American democracy works. And Oz Guinness, I mean, it's in my book, If You Can Keep It, but Oz Guinness says that he got this idea from all the founders, Washington, Jefferson, they all understood this. But Americans today have forgotten this. And this is the heart of, of, of true democracy that's going to work. I'll say it quickly, then I'll explain it. The, the quick idea, he calls it the golden triangle of freedom. He says, freedom or self-government, liberty, requires virtue. Mm -hmm. This is a big idea. It's a big idea. I'm going to explain it. Yeah. Freedom requires virtue. So everybody says, I want democracy, I want freedom. Okay, how? How? Well, you need virtue. 
And then virtue requires some kind of faith. We're not going to say much yet. I'll explain it. Virtue requires some kind of faith. And then faith in turn requires freedom. So, I'll explain it. Basically, when we say what is freedom, what is democracy, what, what is this? It means we're going to govern ourselves. We're not going to be governed from above. Some group of people are going to say, you must do this, you must do this. No, we're going to govern ourselves. We're going to be free. Okay. So our leaders will be elected by us. We will choose our leaders. Okay. So the question is, why does this liberty, this freedom, this self-government require virtue? And it's, it's simple, but m many people don't really understand it. It means that if I'm not going to be governed by some autocratic state power, or I'm not going to be governed from a, a bureaucratic state power. I mean, you, you see this around the world, too, that if you live in many places in Europe, the government is very big and powerful. It's secular, but it's just as wicked and intrusive as if you have a theocratic uh, Muslim government or any kind of government. It's oppressive. So you can have oppressive secularist state, or you can have oppressive theocratic state. Now, in order to have neither of those two, and to be free, where you say, we're going to govern ourselves. We're not going to be governed by a bureaucracy, either secular or a government, uh, an autocratic the theological state. We're going to govern ourselves. So what's necessary is that if some government is not going to tell me right from wrong, they're not going to tell me what to do, I have to do it on my own without being told. So all of the founders, Washington, Jefferson, Franklin, Adams, all of them said, this government will not work. I mean, they knew. They, they're not just saying this is a philosophy. They said, what we're proposing, self-government, people governing themselves, will never work unless the people are virtuous. In other words, if I say, I'm not going to steal because stealing is wrong. I'm going to pay my taxes because it's the right thing to do. I'm going to be faithful to my spouse because it's the right thing to do. I'm going to provide for my children because it's the right thing to do. Nobody's going to force me. I'm going to do these things because I know it's right. So the point is that in order to do these things on my own, I have to have some virtue. I have to have the idea that I want to do these things because they're right, not because the government is forcing me to do it through laws. I do it on my own. So the founders all said that self-government means if people are going to do those things on their own, they're going to govern themselves, they have to be virtuous people. And then the founders said, where's this virtue going to come from? Why will people do the right thing? If the government is not telling you with a gun or a threat, why will you do the right thing? All of the founders said, because they will have some faith in some greater order that they believe in that. Now, most people in America at that time, their faith was in Christ. Their faith was in the God of the Bible. They had a reason to do the right thing because they cared about what he thought, not what the governor thinks, what the president thinks, what the policemen think. I'm doing it because I do it freely because I love God and God loves me and I want to please him. So I'm going to do all these things and I don't need anyone to force me. So the founders, and again, I say Jefferson, Franklin, all of them, and not all of them were strictly Christians, but they had this idea that when we see Christianity really happening in different places, we see crime goes down, uh, spousal abuse goes down, alcoholism goes down. We see this happening. And even if we are not Christians, we see it happens. When, when people get serious about Christ, all these things happen. So even people like Franklin and Jefferson, who were maybe not theologically orthodox Christians, they saw that when Christianity is free, not forced by the government, free and operating among the people freely, they have a better ability to govern themselves. They have virtue. They don't need to be told. So here's the key. So the founders see this thing. They see that self-government, freedom, liberty requires virtue. Virtue requires faith. But they said, we cannot force faith. This is the difference between American democracy and many democracies in Europe or in other parts of the world. They said religion must be free. The government cannot take sides in this religious thing. They have to step back and let the people choose 
freely. So it's the opposite of a theocracy, um, a, a, an Islamic theocracy, or in Europe uh, during the time of the f when America was founded, they had Christian theocracies. They said anyone in this place must be a Catholic in France. Everybody in Greece has to be Greek Orthodox. Everybody in Germany has to be Lutheran. Or so the government was forcing religion. So the founders in America said, we're not going to have that. In this country, faith will be 100% free, voluntary, because we believe that if we don't force it, people will have the freedom to do it on their own. And when they do it on their own, then it becomes powerful. When they're forced by the government, they're just going to do the minimum or they become fanatics. And when Tocqueville came over 50 years after the revolution, he saw this. He said, this is unbelievable. In France, faith or religion is the enemy of freedom, and here the, the, they're working together. So this is something most Americans have forgotten. So that's why I'm so passionate about yes. it. But I said, this is the magic. This is that if, if you have faith that's not forced, you will behave virtuously, you don't need much government, and then you will be able to govern yourself. So in America, more or less, we've been able to do this. Not everybody is a serious Christian, but if you have enough, it creates a culture where doing the right thing, everybody says, that's good, we want to do the right thing here, you know? And so it's ironic, because you, in some ways you need faith, but the faith cannot be forced. You have to have religious liberty, and in this country, that's been a sacred thing, religious liberty, that you and the government will never tell anyone you must believe or you must not believe. I mean, there are governments around the world that say you must believe, you must go to mosque, you must go to church. Then there are other governments that say if you go to church or if you go to mosque, we will persecute you. We are an atheist government. The founders in America said we cannot tell people what to believe, either to believe or not to believe. If you want to be an atheist, you want to be an agnostic, you want to be a Muslim, you want to be a Christian, you want to be whatever you want to be, religion is free. And they trusted that if they do that, it's going to work. It has worked. Yeah. And the idea that I just shared, this is for the whole world. It's not just for America. America has been shining a torch like the Lady Statue of Liberty to the whole world to say, this model, this is for you. You don't need to go down this path and yeah. you don't need to go down this path. Many people choose one or the other, but this is the path that I believe where people are really free. To have an atheist secular democracy, in a way it can't work successfully. You still will feel, um, you still will feel the force of government in that way. It's just a different kind of force. It's maybe a secular force instead of a theocratic force, but that's you'll right. still feel the force. Uh, that, that's wonderful. You, you talk the language of our people when they hear uh, that we will have a, re a country, a, a government, a place, a nation that People are free to choose. They say, yes, you know, choose your religion. Yeah. We have never seen that. We have never seen for 40 some years. They not, haven't seen that. And they're really for, for it. They, when they talk about um, secular democ uh, democracy, that's what they mean. A secular means no religion. Secular, well, this is in, interesting. In their mind. This is interesting yeah. because, again, you can have a theocratic, heavy handed, you know, government uh, that's allied with God. That's bad. To have freedom of religion, it's not quite secular. It's similar, but it's not the same thing. You can't force people to believe, but you want people to believe because if you take God out, if you force God out, you're really not very different from a Marxist, uh, atheist government like they have in China where it's the same problem except the opposite. In other words, you, you have the problem now of we, we rejected God so much that we forbid God. To forbid God is as wicked as to force God. Both are not going to work. So you have to have a situation where faith can flourish, but the government doesn't force it. But if you secularize things too much, you only create a power vacuum and someone will come in and it will be a different kind of oppression. And America has been drifting in this direction the last 40 or so years. We've been drifting in this way. People say, we have a separation of church and state. Yes, you have a separation, but you don't abolish church. You don't abolish God. You, don't abol you just separate it from the government. And this is, a, in, in some ways, it's tricky, but this is the only way that it's ever worked. And it's what, it, it, it enables you to be multicultural in the healthiest way, that people are free, they can choose, they can reject God if they like, they can choose God if they like, 
the government says, yeah. that's not our business. Our business is to keep you free, but at the same time wanting to encourage people to have faith, but a free faith, not a forced faith. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Iranians love America. Uh, if you ask them if there, is, there was a referendum today, they could vote of what kind of government they want. Number one would be democracy American style. They think America is best, and they look at the freedom uh, we have here. Some of us don't appreciate it, by yeah, the way, yeah. but they do. They, they know what we have. That's, yeah. <laughs> they want to be like us. They want to be like Americans. Now, uh, America, tw 250 years of history. And it was based on Christian values, but Definitely. not forced Christian See, values. See, this is the irony, yeah. is that America is not officially a Christian nation. And because it's not officially Christian, it's the most Christian. Because once you make it official, you take away the, the reality of it, and it just becomes a word. Great Britain... I mean, I've written books about this, so I literally know the history that Great Britain in the, um, in the time of Wilberforce, let's say 1800, was officially a Christian nation. They had all kinds of things happening that were profoundly unchristian because it became official and everybody said, well, it's official, I'm English, I must be Christian. No, yeah. you have to do it freely. So they had the slave trade and it was real Christians who challenged the Christian establishment and said to the Christian, uh, the Church of England, this is an abomination. Slavery is against the Bible, but the church went along with it. Right. But the real Christians said, no, the Bible says this is wrong. So you can be officially Christian and it means nothing. The same thing happened in Germany uh, with Hitler. Uh, everybody said, well, I'm not a Jew, I'm not an atheist, I must be a Christian. No. Yeah. If you're a Christian, you're going to behave like a Christian. Right. But they all, they all thought, well, I'm German, I must be Christian because... Luther was a, a German, and he invented Protestantism. We all must be Christians. Every time it becomes official, it's an excuse for people to ignore it. Just like saying, well, I paid my taxes. Don't tell me about the government. Uh, uh, next question. Uh, um, America is, the, I think, it's the only nation that has uh, experienced true democracy for 250 years. Yes. It has had its ups and downs. Um, my question, as I said, the Iranians look up to it. Um, what... If Iranians want to copy what's in America, yeah. the democracy, why sh what should they copy and what should they not copy? Right. Well, as I said, I wouldn't copy America this minute because <laughs> the last 50 years we've drifted away from this noble ideal. Mm -hmm. This noble ideal says that faith has a central role in freedom, but it can't be forced. And what has been happening in the last 50 years is a secular faith has been forced. I mean, this is ironic, because right. we're not talking about Christian faith. A secular faith. People said, uh, we're going to push Christianity out. And they use government to do the pushing. Right. So you really can have uh, 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 people that are, are drifting along over the decades, and things are still pretty good, but they've lost their way. And so... When, when people think about this, we always need examples. Let's take Europe today, right? Europeans, I am European, my mother's German, we have relatives there, we visit. My father's Greek, we have relatives there, we visit, I mean, often. And they are not as free as in America. Now they would say, oh, we have democracy. It's not the same. They have allowed a secular idea to creep in and the government if you don't do the right thing on your own because of your faith or whatever, the government will find a way to force you to do the, these mm -hmm. things. So, so the taxes that they pay, the rules they have, the laws they have are much more oppressive than in America. Now, America is drifting in this direction, but, but not yet. And there are many Americans who understand this idea and they're fighting against it. But So if you say, well, we want a secular democracy like they have in France or whatever, you... You cannot imagine the difference between, because I know, I live in America and I go to Europe, the difference is dramatic. You don't feel that freedom in, in Europe because they have, a, they have in, in many ways, I mean, the European Union, their constitution is 100% secular. And you think, okay, so what do all these countries have in common? What is Europe? Europe was hugely Christian. And... <laughs> 
they basically said, we, we don't want to have that. And so they made the classic mistake. They said, we know what it is to have forced religion in Europe. We don't want that. So we'll have no religion. And that's an equal mistake. Yes. So when you go there, you say, the, the government forces us to do this and this and this. There are all these little rules and things. And the question is, what does it matter if it's the mullahs or if it's uh, Angela Merkel's government? What is it, difference does it make if you're not free you're not free. And so you can be free um, in name only, so they're there, they don't feel free. Uh, but I really think that this is, I often say this, Hormuz, that people around the world outside of America have an incredible opportunity to do what America is itself forgetting. In other words, countries around the world can really do this. They can look at what I'm saying. I mean, I put the basics of it in my book, if you can keep it, but there are many other books where you, you say, this makes sense, and this worked. And when they begin pushing God out, they're imposing a secular, you can call it theocracy in a way, yeah. an atheocracy. And when you do that, you get a different kind of oppression. And so this is the, the genius of the founders, to have a place for faith, knowing that this is fundamental, uh, to encourage faith, but not to make it an, an oppressive government-sponsored faith. And this is kind of the, the really, uh, the, the nuance of, of freedom, that if you don't do that exactly, you're going to drift in one direction or the other. And I get very excited when I think of countries like Iran even thinking about this. Yeah, I'm, I get nervous because people of Iran want democracy and they don't know exactly what it is. But the same thing happened <laughs> in the so-called Arab Spring. They said, okay, yeah. we're going to kill the dictator, <laughs> yeah. now we're free. You're not free. Now you have a power vacuum and some other force will come in, whether it's ISIS or whatever. You, you have to, to govern yourself, it's more than just getting rid of the guys you hate. You have to replace it with something that's going to keep out other people you hate. How can we keep it Right. F free. And, you know, we can go through the list, but the, the, the so-called Arab Spring is the classic example. Yeah. Many naive people said, we're going to have, once you get rid of the dictator, Gaddafi, or whatever, we're going to have democracy. Right. No. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to have this, this system of this golden triangle of freedom as a bulwark against other forces c coming in. You, you, you have to have it. You know, uh, you talked about virtue and uh, some foundation, fundamental beliefs of values yeah. need to be in a society. Right. And you kind of assume it as Christian values yeah. because there are other values yeah. too. Yeah. Like uh, I, I talk to people of Iran, I say, you, we are not ready for democracy because the value system right. comes from Islam. Islam means one individual is not important. Democracy says one person is important. Yeah. Jesus says one person is right. important. That, well, that's big. <laughs> no, no, this is a big thing is that yeah. the God you worship you know, people talk about God, which God? Yeah. Which God? Because yeah. many people around the world, they talk about God. The Christian idea of God, and I mean the pure Christian idea, because you can even have within Christianity people twisting things. So we're talking about what the Bible says about the individual is radical. It says God died for you, not for humanity, yeah. for you, like you're his son or you're his daughter. And so the value of the individual is key also to American democracy in the sense it says that the majority cannot crush the individual. That's Even right. if people vote and say, w w we all agree on this, they have to first ask themselves the question, is this a just law? Are you persecuting one or two people? So how do you have majority rules, but how do you protect the individuals right. if the majority decides to go in the wrong direction? This is why you need a constitution like the American Constitution and a very clear view I mean, it starts in English law, but in the American Declaration and in the Constitution and in some of our subsequent um, uh, speeches and things, Lincoln understood this brilliantly. You, you get this beautiful idea that is very rare. It's very rare, and it's fragile. And the, the only way really for it to continue is if people understand it and live it out and celebrate it. I mean, if you leave it alone, we'll just all go back to some That's kind right. of oppressive government. And I think that America has been sliding in this direction, and, but the people in America are waking up. And every That's time good. I get an opportunity, I'm talking to them That's about why, these That's why, yeah, you talk on, on your shows and all that, and appreciate that. Uh, about the, the values, uh, 
I, I, I talk to our people and say, I'm not anti-Islamic. I'm just realistic. This type of theology does not match it democracy. Cannot. You see that. Well, it can't. Uh, you know, America tried to import democracy to Iraq, or Afghanistan. Yes, yes, it, yes. it doesn't work. Uh, listen, I've okay. spoken about this. In yeah. fact, I touch yeah. on it in my book, if yeah. you can keep it. But I saw this a few years ago. I said, you know what? The, the people who brought about the Iraq war and stuff, they were naive and they didn't understand what we're talking about. They thought, get rid of the dictator, here comes democracy. Yeah. No way. No way. <laughs> no way. That doesn't happen. This is naive. You have to, the people have to be trained to govern themselves. That's right. They have to understand how it works. If they don't understand that, they're not going to It's like giving a gun to a three-year-old. That's right. He, he is not equipped yeah. for this. He has to be trained. This is fragile. Just respecting and other people's opinion. That's Christian well, value. That, well, see, this is the other <laughs> thing, too. And, and, and in a funny way, because we have to be honest, historically, Christians didn't get this. In other words, if you go back to 1400, the Christians were oppressive with the Christian faith. Right. They forced the Christian faith. It took time for the ideas of the gospel to work its way into government yeah. and you get Luther kind of gets you closer but Luther didn't understand it yeah. but when you get to America around 1776 they finally figured out how can we have a system that honors God that honors people that honors people who don't believe in God that honors people that love God that I, how do we do this and all those ideas come out of the Bible but it's very easy for people to use the Bible for their own, you know, th things yeah, and yeah. stuff. So when you talk about values, I guess I'm thinking about, there's the one thing that the Christian faith has is called grace. It's called yeah. loving our enemies. And, and so that even if we disagree, we can still be respectful yeah. and love each other. So it's not about right and wrong. Right. It's right and wrong is real, but we also have to have a way when we disagree, how do we, how do we function? And that's that's part of what I would call Christian culture, that the Christian culture, Christian faith cannot be forced. Amen. And Amen. if you know that, then you, you understand that it's antithetical to, to uh, that kind of government. The government has to be really respectful of people that they can have their, their yeah. own faith. And I would say only the Christian faith, it's a strong faith, but it also respects the freedom right. yeah. of those not that faith. So because I'm a Christian... I would never try to force my faith on someone with a different faith Amen. because I'm aware you cannot do it. You cannot do you it. You can force right. the name. I could say, okay, now you're this, now you're this, now you're yeah. baptized, but it's meaningless. But the real faith has to come from God. Amen. And so this is, to me, unique to Christianity. Yeah, definitely, Amen. definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Eric. You shared many great points. I took some notes. Yeah. I, I wish I had more, and I'm going to read your book. But uh, the points you made clear, I'm sure, are audience, our viewers benefit from that. I'm excited. Thank I'm you so much for, for Iran, sharing that. The future. Amen. Yeah. Iran, uh, as the Lord promises in Jeremiah 49, 38, Iran will be transformed by the gospel. Amen. And it's going to impact not just the region, the whole world. That's written in the Bible. So Amen. we believe that and it's going to happen. Well, thank you so much thank for you. being bless with you. us. God bless. Bye-bye.